the Kingston Frontenac Public Library and today for Art Hive I'm going to walk you through how to make what I'll call a serving table. This wood would be perfect for making a table so I'm going to stop at this pile and put one log into my car to work on this craft. So as I showed you walking through the woods you can all often find places where people have cut down logs and just left them because it's, it's interfering or it's going to fall on the road or hydro lines and uh, if the wood has been there for about a year you can collect that piece of wood bring it home and make your own coffee table, serving table. So all you need is a screwdriver, flathead, the largest one you can find, and a hammer. And you're going to start by taking the bark off of this tree stump by putting your screwdriver in between the hardwood and the bark and just pounding down. And when you pound down, you can then peel the bark away do that all the way around and then we're going to turn it upside down and do it from the other side as well. If your wood is too fresh, this job, this is very easy on this piece. So um, the older the wood, the easier task will be. Okay, so, you know, between one and two years of sitting in the forest, sometimes people who uh, cut wood for firewood for the winter get these kind of logs delivered to their home and uh, before they chop them up you could use them for this purpose. So I have to say this piece of wood was the best one I've ever used. Um, typically my wood is a little fresher than this one and I would have to spend um, quite a bit of time doing this just chipping away at the bark. I don't worry if I make divot marks in the wood because I'm going to take care of them later but I've had to do this through the whole log on in many cases. And in this one, it just really fell away quite nicely as soon as I put pressure so on. So now we're ready for step two in the process of building this table. Well, in step one, we only needed a hammer and screwdriver. And this second phase of the project, you're gonna need a sander. I have one that has a sawdust collector, which is helpful, but a lot of sawdust still, still escapes. So I do wear a face mask when I'm, I'm doing my sanding. I used a 60 grade sandpaper. It's kind of a rough finish, but, but this is a rough finish product. If you don't have a round rotary sander, a flat square one works just as well. This is not fine work. It's very rough and it, we want it to sort of look rough when we're. So I'll put my mask and my safety goggles on and get started. starting to move along in this project. I really like this log in particular because of the different contours on it. So I'm finished my sanding now and uh, as you can see I've left some dark areas on it. Um, you could keep sanding and sanding to get much more of that off if that was your choice but this is how I'm going to go forward. You need to take a damp cloth and wipe um, your project down like so. This gives you a really good idea of what it's going to look like when you stain it. But you have to get all the sawdust off in order for the stain to adhere. And the top area as well. So we're now ready to stain the project. Um, there are a number of different products you can use and it's completely your choice. I like to go with a um, a gloss finish, but make sure whatever product you, you get that it's uh, designed for outdoor use. Otherwise it won't withstand the elements. 
So I've got this product. It uh, looks a little bit white inside before you use it, um, but it comes up clear and it, it's a nice shiny finish. So it's so easy to do. Um, just brush it on. All surfaces. I even do the bottom just to try and help preserve the wood a little bit more. But it no need to be really tidy. It's a very rough project and um, just a really quick coat. I would let this dry for several hours and then put a second coat on it um, just to, to give a little more protection from the elements and hopefully have your project last a lot longer than if you only had this the single coat on it. Um, so now this is our finished product. Um, this is a one afternoon project. I worked maybe three or four hours from start to finish. That doesn't count the time in going through the forest looking for the wood. But once I had my wood, three to four hours, and I have this lovely table sitting beside my Adirondack chair. Thank you.